Hello, this is Joe Polish, founder of Genius Network, and I've got a couple guys who I think are actually at a pretty genius level. This is uh, Peter Diamandis and Stephen Kotler. Uh, they just wrote an amazing book called Abundance, and uh, it's about the future and how it's getting better for everyone. And there's a lot of people that are going to watch us and say, that's bullshit. I mean, the, the world is not getting better. The world is worse. So break that down. What does that mean? You can't see the fact that poverty has dropped more in the past 50 years than in the past 500. You can't see how good things are actually are, because we've got a brain that is perpetually keeping us in a bad place. We suffer a negativity bias. So we give more weight to negative information than we do to positive information. We suffer from confirmation bias, which is that we believe those things, we actually hear those things that confirm our beliefs, and things that conflict with our beliefs don't come in at all. We also have an amygdala. The amygdala is an older kind of limbic system. It's the portion of the brain that's responsible for really primal emotions. Fear, rage, hate, those kinds of things. It's also the very first stop all incoming information makes when it comes into the brain. One of the reasons the media is so saturated with bad news, if it leads, it bleeds, is because they're vying for the amygdala's attention, and you're feeding a fiend. Basically, not only are we bringing in the good news, but all these biases prohibit us from actually seeing the positive. So it's actually like we're living in a tiny little dark hole. You know, if you stop and you think about the fact that today somebody that we consider impoverished the United States you know, 99% of the people under the poverty level in the U.S. have running water, flushing toilets, televisions, you know, 80 plus percent of access to phones, air conditioning, cars. I mean, these are things that literally the poorest people on the planet uh, today have more than the the kings and queens of 100 and 200 years ago. So I want to ask you about four <laughs> areas. You talk about four forces that will solve our biggest problems, uh, exponential technology, uh, the DIY uh, innovator, which is uh, do-it-yourself, uh, the techno-philanthropist, and the rising billion. So I'd like to have you describe what those things are. We're in the period of, uh, of rapid exponential growth of technology, and it's only getting faster. So underpinning all of this is Moore's Law, the notion that when you go and buy a computer, it's twice as fast 12 to 18 months for the same price. This year, uh, IBM created something called Watson, a computer system and software that was able to beat the top two Jeopardy players. Mm -hmm. That Watson computer now is being taught how to think about medical questions and ultimately it's going to medical school. Now, a AI like Watson living on the Google or Apple or Amazon cloud uh, all of a sudden is available to anyone with a cell phone. and. Now, someone with a cell phone speaking to this AI in natural language can have uh, a doctor that can diagnose them better than anybody. So they'd have access to abundant health care. That same artificial intelligence could become an extraordinary teacher so that anybody in the developing world, by the way, cell phone penetration is going to reach 70 plus percent by 2013. So anyone in the developing world with a cell phone has access to the best medical care, the best mm -hmm. Uh, educators, they're living into a world of health and education abundance as just two examples. Because of the accelerating rate of technology, for the very first time probably in the history of the world, individuals can solve problems that previously only governments or large corporations could do. And you, I mean, Peter's X Prize is a fantastic example. It was won by Bert Ertan with a team of 26 people, 30 people, 30 people, yeah, um, and 26 million dollars they put a man into space. This is something that took 300 billion, is my, is my number correct? A lot of money for a the US. Lot, a <laughs> lot of money for the US government, private, privately, and here we are 30 years later, and one guy and a small team of innovators is doing this. We're seeing the same kind of progress that, that Burt made in space opening up in the medical front here. Craig Venter beat the United States government in the race for the human genome. He accomplished what the government couldn't do, and he did it for $100 million you know, in under a year. And that same technology that he spent $100 million on, here we are, this was in 2000, it's 11 years later, and it's $4,000 now. You know, people f speak about the bottom billion, the bottom of the pyramid, and, mm -hmm. and we've given them a different name in this book. Uh, I, I call them the rising billion. A African tribesman, a Maasai warrior in the middle of Africa today on a cell phone, if you stop and think about it, they've got better mobile communications than the President of the United States did 25 years ago. Right. And if they're on Google, they have better access to information than the president did 15 years ago. They're living in a world of 
information and communication abundance. Pick 30 applications and go back and price those 30 applications that you now get for free on your Android right. phone and price it what it would cost you 20, 30 years ago, and it was well over a million bucks. So someone who's living on $2 a day literally has access to millions of dollars of, of capability on their cell phone. So they are a rising billion. In other words, they are rising in their ability to add to the economy, to consume, to produce. Uh, another fact along this line, in 2010, we had about, of the world's population, 23% uh, had access to the internet. By 2020, just you know, eight odd years from now, we're gonna have on the order of two thirds of the world. We're gonna go from two billion people connected to about five billion people. Three billion new minds are getting connected right. to the internet. What will these people want? What will they consume? What will they produce? What will they invent? So a lot of the solutions that are coming out of the third world are gonna be things that we need here in the first world. They're gonna be the things that save our asses here. We have things like the Khan Academy. All of MIT's coursework is now online. There's massive educational opportunities. So not only are these people coming online, they're coming online and they're educating themselves. Uh, another, another force that we talk about in the book is uh, the techno-philanthropist. So today more than ever, there is a huge amount of wealth that's been created from people in the technological arena. You know, the proverbial Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, and so forth. It's people who say, I see a problem, and I'm dedicating my capital and my career to getting rid of it. So a point in, in case is, is Bill Gates and malaria. And unlike the robber barons of old, it's not just that people are throwing their money at the problem. That's one way of solving the problems, and you know, it made a dent. These people are getting actively involved. What will people really, really learn from, uh, from abundance? What will they get? Hope. We're really, not only are we saying the world is getting better, we're laying out a very, 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 very easy to digest factual case for it that pretty much anybody you know, reading the book is, is going to come to. My, our goal, at least my, my goal, and I want to speak for you, but is to change the conversation in the world. You know, there's a conversation that's going on that we're screwed that the world is getting worse, that the, the, the world for my children is going to be worse than the world. I'm done with that. I, I'm done. That is patently false. That is the world that the news media is feeding to us nonstop. Ultimately, you can find out how, um, A, you can explain to your friends and family where the world is going, but most importantly, you can figure out where you want to get involved.